Welcome to Monet Cafe, friends, subscribers, and visitors. Today I'm going to talk about using dynamic color while doing a pet portrait. Also some tips on pet painting. And uh, a lot of times I get questions as to my color choices because you know I love color and I exaggerate color. So in this lesson, I'm going to take a little more time to talk about how to get that dynamic color in your artwork. Oh, and here's my little pet right here. He's usually my sidekick, Mr. Jackson. Hello friends, visitors, and subscribers, and welcome to Monet Cafe. Today I'm going to be doing a dog portrait, and if you've seen my channel, you know sometimes I get a little cameo appearance from my Jackson here, and uh, surprisingly I haven't done a portrait of him, so I need to get to it. But anyway, I'm going to be doing a portrait of a little pug. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. But this one in particular is so adorable. Her name is Molly, and her owner is so precious and sweet. I actually think she... Um, found out about me through either this YouTube channel or the Facebook group, Monet Cafe Art Group. But anyway, Jackson, you're heavy, so I'm going to put you down. Um, but anyway, uh, I want to talk a little bit about, um, in this particular video, how to get that personality in the dog. Because not all breed, not an, an individual dog within a breed, they don't all look the same. They have their own little... Um, nuances and personalities and differences in their expressions so uh, Molly is certainly a little beauty and a sweetheart so I hope to really capture her personality in this so anyway join me now and we're gonna have a lot of fun all right let's get started now it's always a good idea to do some sketching before getting started with any portrait whether it's people or animals and um, I like to do quite a few of them and it's a good idea also to ask the owner for a few different photos not just the one that you'll be painting so I did a total of three sketches I'm speeding this up real fast because it's not about the sketch it's just about making the point that you want to get um, really accuracy by the time you get to the final painting stage and so doing some sketches is great I didn't um, measure as accurately in these sketches as I do in the final which you'll see here now I'm going to be using in this painting a, a product I forget often it's called pastel board and I really love it uh, it's made by ampersand and it's a hard board it comes in different colors and different sizes the piece I'm using is an 11 by 14 and uh, it comes protected covered in this plastic but the grit of it is actually really nice um, it it takes a lot of layering and I happen to love that neutral gray color um, that it comes in and some of the other colors as well now one of the disadvantages about these boards is they're heavy they're not really great to um, put on your easel so I just propped mine up on the bottom of my easel now here is where I got more serious about getting Molly's proportions and dog proportions in general accurate and for me it was all about those eyes um, Molly has such an expressive sweet little look to her face so I wanted to make sure I captured that now I love using um, when I'm using like this gray board I like using a combination of charcoal pencils for the sketch and this is a neat set it comes in different um, values you've got dark black medium black gray and white so I'm really doing a value study with my sketch and it's almost like taking value notes so that when I get to the final painting um, I kind of have a roadmap to go by I want to show you also my pastel choices but I'm gonna get a little deeper with this and actually give you some reasonings as to why I chose these particular pastels now here I am in Photoshop and uh, I'm, I hope this is large enough for people to see but what I've done I'm gonna play around with this a little bit what I've done is I've uh, pulled up the photo of Molly that I'm using as a reference photo agreed upon um, by the uh, owner and uh, I've also put up here in the corner my pastel selections I'll probably enlarge those a little bit as I talk but um, what I want you to notice is I want I'm, I'm gonna go through the photograph and give you my reasoning um, for enhancing certain colors I really hope this helps some people um, actually let me take this and um, kind of enlarge this uh, picture of Molly real quick it's hard for me because when I do the screen recording it's hard to see things alright let me scale it a little bit alright so let me make this a little bit bigger and now we can kind of view it better alright so in looking at this right away I and I don't know where this uh, ability came from uh, to be able to see certain colors it may just be working with it a lot 
but um, I've gotten to where I can just look at something and see where that color is that I'm going to enhance. Now, for example, let me just pick this eye. It's the, the, it's the right eye of the dog, but the left eye on the screen. This particular eye right here, I'm going to blow it up again, um, is full of color. Oh my goodness, there is so much color in this eye. And uh, it, at first glance, you think, oh, that's just like a lot of gray, a little bit of brown, you know, and that looks a little bit of a bluish gray. But uh, you can really uh, magnify those and punch up those colors um, for your final painting. Because let me show you what I see. I'm actually going to go ahead. I don't do this when I'm working from the reference photo, but it's something you can do to get an idea of how to do this. I'm going to go ahead and um, adjust this image. Oh, I have to finish uh, transforming it. Um, I'm going to adjust this image with the uh, the saturation and the vibrance. Okay, let me. I'll just show you this little scale. You can change in Photoshop the vibrance and the saturation. Uh, I'll leave it right up here so you can see it. Vibrance just kind of makes things more vibrant. You can see it, it's a little bit like it kind of punches up the saturation a little bit. Saturation is more of the actual color. Okay, um, so. When I do that, like, let me just punch up the saturation all the way. And you can see, doesn't that look like more green in there? Look at this, look at this green, that little teal green in there. Look how that red just popped out. Isn't that awesome? Um, so what you do is you kind of look for the subtleties and you punch them up, you in intensify them. So I'm gonna take it back down, okay? So now it's back to looking dull. So you don't have to paint what you see you can interpret it again now you might since you saw that um, enhanced like it was you might now be able to see oh yeah that is kind of a like a neat teal bluish green this you know has got a little blue down in there and this right here has got this is going to be your highlight notice and you want to keep your highlight this is not a note um, example of color but you want to keep your highlight formed with the um, shape of the eye this is a, a round spherical object so notice how that highlight is curving around it. Okay, so little things like that. You get a little white highlight right there. So there's a lot going on in this eye, full of color. Okay, so um, so it's just a really really neat way to be able to um, um, to see color is to look at it, analyze it. Oh, I got to get out of this before I can do anything. I'll just leave it like that, um, and then um, intensify it. You know, with your color choices. So. Um, actually, let me go here. I need to move this here. Um, now, let's look at this side. This is also full of color. Uh, look at the reds in here. You've got reds, you've got oranges. Um, now, here's an interesting thing. Um, a lot of times people paint the whites of the eyes as white. Uh, but let me show you something. This is not white, okay? This little part of the eye right here. I'm going to use something um, like a little color picker here. Let me get my paintbrush over here. I know you can't see what I'm doing. Let me make it smaller. And uh, I'm going to show you what this color really is next to white, okay? So let's look at something that is um, that is kind of white, okay? Uh, probably the lightest thing is, is kind of up in here right now, okay? So I'm going to use this little thing called a color picker. I'm going to hold it down. It has a little eyedropper. I get to pick that color, okay? I just picked it. Now let me take it over here to something that is white. And let me show you the color, okay? You see, that's not white. That's kind of a grayish color. Um, so um, you want to make sure you're really, really analyzing these colors and not just doing what your brain says, okay? Um, now let me look again at some other things going on here. You may notice in the final painting that I have a lot of blues and purples going on in the nose, okay? Um, we have a tendency to just go, oh, let's just paint this nose all gray with maybe some little black highlights. But no, there's so much color going on here. There's lots of greens going on in this nose right here. There's purples all throughout here. Let me punch up that color again. Um, let me intensify it with the vibrance and the saturation. All right. It, that's the saturation is really making it really warm, too. Let me get the vibrance here. Okay. You're starting to see some of those greens now. And um, I'd have to take some of the warmth away from this. It's a little too warm to see all the other stuff. But, you know, you can really, really interpret take the subtleties of the color that you see and and punch them up intensify them a little bit you know um, maybe a lot if you want so that is just really something that you can do it's not all that hard um, you just gotta practice but start small practice with something simple 
uh, don't start a big huge project oh, like right now I'm just as I'm talking I see purple in here over the eye I don't know if you can see that especially probably not if you're viewing this video on your phone but there's purples in these shadows I also want you to notice something too I found this photo very interesting look at the division here the right side of the photo is warm you see the warmth in the muzzle here and the warmth over here look at this side this side of the nose it's cool you see the cool in the shadows here everything over here is cooler than it is over here and you know a lot of times photos aren't correct you know and you don't want to follow everything that's in the photo but in this case it, it made for a really neat interpretation of this uh, to become a painting all right so now let me talk a little bit about these color choices right here I'm going to uh, kind of blow this up a little bit let me transform this um, thank you for bearing with me um, for this okay so I'm blowing this up I'm gonna leave the little part of the dog showing here so you can see it alright so I have I already knew there was a few things going on here I know I need colors for the dog's fur okay so we've got a, a, a good gradation um, some of the shadows behind the dog's fur is actually very reddish and you can lay down your darks and then lighten them up as you color you'll see as I'm painting how I do that I put the darkest you know like even in this little area of his head um, don't just put brown down I put a darker reddish color and then I um, I glazed pastels over it to lighten it up and have that showing through so it's kind of underneath so um, look at all these neat and pretty uh, reds oranges and yellows I've got and my lightest light here well in the whole painting the lightest light is probably this one or maybe a couple of these these are pretty light too okay so I don't have any white in here this is kind of a neutral gray gray blue purple something um, so these are my fur colors all right now let me go over here to my darker fur colors like that are gonna be in this warm side of the muzzle and the eyes see these this is if they're square like this big square ones they're Terry Ludwig pastels um, I, and I'm not gonna go through a whole pastel um, example here of explaining what they all are but um I, I let color guide my choice rather than pastel I mean sometimes of course you want to use your your softer pastels at the end of a painting but if I don't have that color uh, I, I just use it whatever you know whatever it is that I need I grab it and I use it and I make it work for me okay so so these are some of my darkest darks here these are some of my darkest darks here but I have them kind of divided up by color temperature um, okay again so fur colors um, warmer fur colors some of my darker warmer fur, fur colors these are some of my cooler um, colors from uh, value scale from dark down to light now I've got a little bit of blues and some blues that have more greens tealy blues in here like this um, but these are going to be my cooler temperatures in here from dark down to light now I love purples in the shadows there's lots of purples um, that you can punch into this painting um, and give it some life purple just adds life you know it's really really a fantastic color now these down here it's very important for me anyway I've learned I didn't used to always add many neutrals in my work but to put some neutrals in because these punchy colors are going to show up even more with some of the neutrals and also neutrals are in areas where you want them to recede or you want them to not have so much focus because you don't want your whole painting to be shouting and now here are the the spicy colors right here that I love I added I think one more before the painting was over I think I maybe before this whole painting was done I might have added two more pastels one was a really pretty blue teal color um, and a, like a brown another neutral I think so these are the spice colors this red if you just kind of squint your eyes and look at this that red is like popping <laughs> and uh, these are some of the colors that I used in the eyes okay and that really made those eyes stand out for Molly for me Molly's eyes are just so expressive and such a sweet look and I really wanted them to be the focus of the painting all right so I hope this helped you a little bit with the color choices I'll try during the painting process to talk about it a little bit more and uh, I hope that helped I know I've had a, some of you saying um, I really want to know more about how to choose color okay so uh, hopefully that helps all right so let's get started with the painting I had someone make a very um, useful and practical comment about something I used to do and I haven't done it in a while which is to actually uh, make some marks of my pastels and show you the colors so I've put a little piece of newsprint next to the sketch here and uh, I'm gonna actually show you 
the colors next to the painting. Now that is my darkest dark. Um, believe it or not, it's not a black. It's more of a dark uh, purple. This is a dark, dark uh, blue-gray. Um, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit, but it's the same colors you saw in my little plate. And I liked my little gray plate. It happened to be one I already had because it kind of um, was similar to the gray background that I'm using. So it made my colors uh, kind of accurate. Color and value is dependent upon what it's next to. Darker colors look darker on something, or a color looks darker on something light um, than it does on something dark. Okay, and, and I had a little video not too long ago that I, I gave some neat little um, visual illusion examples as to uh, how that works. So you've got to keep that in mind um, with whatever service you're working on or whatever colors are next to each other, uh, but don't get overwhelmed by all of this. A lot of it is just trial and error and practice and if you're just beginning um, this may be a little bit like whoa look at all that stuff she just talked about but don't don't think you're supposed to know all this right away you're not it'll come it will all come and I have plenty of other videos um, that talk about um, uh, more simple uh, paintings and exercises that you can do and as a matter of fact I guess I'm not going to speed up me putting these colors down because it's kind of nice to talk. As a matter of fact, I my goal when my life gets a little bit more stable, uh, I won't go over my saga again that some of you know, um, is to make some uh, very user-friendly beginner to intermediate videos to where it is a step-by-step -step where you can literally just follow right along. I'll show you at the beginning of the video what the end result's going to look like and we may have some um, products that are uh, affordable for you and I've got something I'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag yet I've got something in the works that could be very awesome for Monet Cafe and for beginners who would like to get supplies that are affordable and um, uh, good for uh, th these videos that I'm making so I can't say any more about it, but it's very exciting. So anyway, lots of great things coming on the Monet Cafe art train. <laughs> Woo -hoo! All right, now I'm going to speed this up and then we'll get started with the painting. I really apologize here that uh, I typically have my camera on my right side because I'm left-handed. Um, I was trying to do something a little different. I've I've had some of you know in my in the Monet Cafe art group on Facebook that I've had a shoulder injury. It's actually doing so much better, and I really think due to a lot of prayer. I we're, we got such a great group on Facebook. But um, anyway, um, I was uh, kind of trying to. It, it kind of hurt to turn the way I was turning with my camera to the other side, but. It didn't work, so I end up moving it to the right anyway. So for this first part on this eye, um, you're not going to be able to see the marks as good as you do in just a minute. Okay, so this part doesn't last that long. A little bit of the work on the eye, and then you'll be able to see my mark making um, a lot better. But you know, you can already see how I have intensified the color in that eye. Now, you can. the cool thing about colors, you can go bold to begin with. You can always tone it down if you need to. Um, but I wanted to definitely exaggerate it at the beginning. Um, so uh, I've sped this up a little bit here. And for the most part, the rest of this video is going to be um, just watching me work. The main point was for me to do that part in Photoshop to kind of give you my reasoning um, for color choices. And uh, I've actually only got so much ability with my computer and my internet speed where I live now um, to to work <laughs> so uh, that's why sometimes I have to kind of speed them up at the end here so bear with me and I hope you enjoy this
I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know I did. And I hope you learned something about using dynamic color in your artwork. And, uh, you know, it was such a blessing for me just looking at this sweet little face. <laughs> what a precious little baby this girl is. And uh, I hope you'll try some pet portraiture and uh, try some experimenting with color. So happy, happy painting. It was a blessing to be with you today in Monet Cafe. Bye.